Hello, fellow risk takers, and welcome to my worst investment ever. Stories of loss to keep you winning. In our community, we know that to win in investing, you must take risk, but to win big, you've got to reduce it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm on a mission to help 1 million people reduce risk in their lives. To reduce risk in your life, go to myworstinvestmentever.com today and take the risk reduction assessment I have created from the lessons I've learned from more than 470 guests. It's time you start building wealth the easy way, by reducing risk. Fellow risk takers, this is your worst podcast host, Andrew Stotts from AE Stotts Academy, and I'm here with featured guest, Amit Kumar. Amit, are you ready to join our mission? Yes, already. Yeah. Well, let me introduce you to the audience. Amit Kumar is CEO of OLX Autos Indus India. He is an entrepreneur, a business leader, and a speaker. After his humble beginnings, Amit graduated from the Indian Institute of Technology of Bombay and built multiple internet e-commerce ventures in Asia, Africa, and Europe. He is a regular contributor on leadership, entrepreneurship, and economics. He is passionate about human evolution and is a psychology geek. Hmm. Amit, take a minute and tell us a bit about the value that you bring to the world. It's, it's an interesting question and uh, uh, I, I remember this uh, uh, from a Stanford graduate MBA essay that you need to write. Uh, uh, and and the, the subject of that essay, if I remember it correctly, is what matters to you the most. Uh, and it's a, it's a compelling subject in which you have to really think about uh, yourself uh, and then answer it. Uh, and then my simplistic answer uh, to your question uh, and, and to myself is, uh, I think being a good human being at a very simplistic and core level is the value that, that I bring to the world. Mm. Uh, I think uh, being respectful of others, uh, doing your own part and giving back to the society. Uh, I've been fortunate, blessed. Uh, that I've I've gotten so much uh, personally, uh, uh, a happy family, uh, doing well professionally. I think not all of us uh, are fortunate enough, uh, and and uh, we 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 all of us have to be good human beings uh, to each other, share mm -hmm. what we have, and that's what I bring to the world. That's beautiful. I remember reading a book and it told me to ask people around me what they thought of me or what they liked, what they didn't like, what I did well, what I didn't. And I remember asking my mom, you know, what do you like about me? And she said, I like that you're, you're kind to everybody you meet. I think that's, 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 that's so simple and so inspiring, right? I mean, it just tears me up even thinking about it right now. My mother's in the other room. It's Thanksgiving today that we're recording this on November 25th. And we're having a party with friends coming here in Bangkok and uh, we're having, having a good time. But it just reminds me, you remind me to bring it back to simplicity. So ladies and gentlemen, there's a lesson from Amit right there. Keep it simple. Be a good human being. Now it's time to share your worst investment ever. And since no one goes into their worst investment thinking it will be, tell us a bit about the circumstance leading up to it and then tell us your story. So Andrew, uh, this is not a quote unquote uh, normal investment story where you put in money and do not make enough money to make it uh, a good investment. Uh, I look at investment uh, uh, from the lens of uh, time, people, and as a result, uh, you get money to invest. And to me, uh, uh, people and relationship investments uh, are, are the most crucial and critical ones. And here I'm talking about uh, my initial journeys uh, in, a, in one of the companies, uh, and we were building a, a business going really fast. Uh, and then we hired a really smart uh, uh, person, ex-consultant, top pedigree, top colleges, uh, sharp operational mind, uh, uh, and, and as a part of the leadership team, uh, I really liked that individual for the drive uh, uh, and, and, and the analytical buildup that he brought on the table. 
and i personally started to invest my time in mentoring that individual uh, because it was in my interest to grow the business if the individuals grow the business grows and goes to the next level and and i would have done that for uh, an year year and a half plus working with the individual growing the business the business got almost to 10x in that period we all grew uh, and uh, at some point in time that individual found uh, another opportunity to go to uh and and at that moment uh, we were you uh, know in, in a party uh, in a in a pub late night probably his send off party and then we were he, he used to smoke and and we were in the smoking room uh, and uh, you know because i was so invested and in, and in, at i would say on on friendly terms with him i thought let me share uh, some of the feedback that that can help this individual improve and do a even better uh, uh, job uh, at at the places that that he's going to and i shared a few not so easy uh, uh and difficult things uh, about that individual on let's say some of the parts where he lacked the ownership uh, in in the things that he did and i had to really make up for it uh and while the party ended and we all came back uh, happily home late that night uh but but suddenly i found that that individual almost uh, shut me down and and he was moving into a different uh, organization anyways so i i discounted it for for the for the moment hustle etc but but i after a few months i realized that that individual changed and our relationship which was so good just came to a halt or or, or just did not exist the way it did and and i recapped and rewinded and held that feedback responsible for it Mm. uh it it was a sizable investment that i i realized just sort of broke down uh i i had invested a lot of time and i did not get anything for it and to me i think what we carry as individuals is uh, is our investment into relationship which relationships which comes back multi multifold so i was really disappointed with that mm. uh i think uh, it's been a almost 5 years now and me and that individual have reconnected and have started on on a positive track and i would still try and get that investment back on track if i can but mm. i think uh, that is that is one of the worst investments ever yeah it's such a interesting topic let let us first now know a little bit about you know what you learned from this experience i think one big learning uh, uh, for for me uh, has been that uh, feedback cannot be shocking feedback has to be gradual feedback has to be two way and uh, maybe the the send off party where you are having drinks is not the best place to to share your feedback <laughs> i think uh, if, if you are sharing tough feedback uh, uh, choose the right place uh, and and just do not bombard at the individual uh, or just do not do only that uh, i think there is a typical shit sandwich uh, uh, theory about the feedback which starts with the good and the bad and then ends with the good i think there is some human and psychological rational to that mm. uh, but i think the big big learning for me is that feedback hard hitting feedback coming at one go it doesn't work and it it is it is more damaging than than sort of building yeah maybe i'll share a few things uh, the first one is I just wrote down the word environment and I have a at at my home office I have a boardroom and the boardroom is my balcony with plants and a flowing water and if I have something that I want to talk to someone about I said come to the boardroom let's sit down on comfortable chairs and let's just relax and talk so I think you know the first thing I take away from it is you know set set up the environment right environment means it's safe it's just you and them there's no threat around that's the first thing um the second thing is i think when you're giving people advice you sh- i want to tell a story when i was a, when i was a young guy i went to work for pepsi outside of uh, after i left university and i was in los angeles and we loaded trucks every night <clears throat> and all of the loaders had their loading you know documents and then they'd load these trucks we'd load about 100 trucks a night And some of the guys were really good, some of the guys were not that good. They made a lot of mistakes. One of the guys was really bad and he constantly made mistakes. 
So one time I sat down and decided I was going to sit down and talk to him, and, and you know, everybody knew he was the worst. And I showed him, and he said, I'm not the worst. I don't make those mistakes. And at that time, I kind of realized that we all see ourselves in, in a certain way, and that you have to assume that somebody does not see what it is that you're giving feedback on. And it's, if you assume that they do see it, well, then you know, you're gonna, it's going to be difficult. Because, I mean, obviously, giving feedback to somebody who, who is aware of their weaknesses, that's already tough. But if you're going to, to talk to somebody that's really not aware, then you've got to think about how to do that. I think that's part of what I learned from what you were saying about you know, maybe not doing it all at once, talking about you know, other things. And so the first thing I mentioned about is environment. The second one is this idea of assuming that they don't really know the feedback you're going to give. And I think if you do that, that's valuable. Now, the third one is that my business partner and I in my coffee business, Dale, we have a saying that we use called principles before personalities. And what is the principle? The principle is we are together in this business to create value for our customers that also creates value for us and for our employees and our stakeholders so that we really you know, all gain from this. And the personalities can get frustrated with each other, but we have made a commitment that when we start to get into personalities and that type of frustration, we stop, we step back, and we think about principles before personalities. So those are three things I take away from your, uh, I, like, I like this topic because I think there's a lot to it. Is there anything else that you would add to that? I think I would, I would add to that, and I was thinking about it when, when you were talking about it. I think there is one element around, it's more difficult to give feedback to top performers who are doing almost everything right. Yeah. Right. And, and, and uh, there, there is this uh, uh, thing about why smart people stop learning or how smart people stop learning. I think uh, the responsibility lies on both the sides of the manager and that smart person, right? Mm. Because you are almost always reliant and dependent on that person to perform. And hence, at some level, you shy away from sharing the areas of improvement with that individual also. Because you are worried, okay, if I break this bad news, what will happen tomorrow? Uh, so it, it's more difficult and hence, uh, as somebody who's, who needs to share feedback, you need to be more uh, prepared with, with the pointers that you made around the environment and the setting and the feeling of security for a smart person. Uh, and, and that's one takeaway for me. Mm, yeah. The other thing it made me think about is I, I, I have a mastermind or an accountability group we meet every Friday. And, and that's also a way as an individual to receive feedback that we have an environment that we agree, hey, we're going to talk tough to each other. We're going to push each other. We're going to measure. We're going to question. And then you create an environment to say that's, that those are the game rules, so the, the ground rules. So that's another you know, thing that, that you, know, you can do. So let me ask you, based upon what you learned from this story and what you continue to learn, what one action would you recommend our listeners take to avoid suffering the same fate? And I'm thinking about when some of our listeners is about to give some feedback to, they want to give feedback to a, a strong performer, what should they do? Yeah, uh, I think as over a period of time, uh, as an individual, I have Want, I moved towards uh, a continuous feedback sharing mode. So feedback is not just about the annual appraisal. It is, it is more about being open to talk about it in your weekly one-on-ones or monthly one-on-ones. Uh, so that is, that is one area uh, which, which is definitely helpful. Mm. The second part is that when you do this feedback sharing, try and put it on paper. So it cannot just be verbal because as individuals, as humans, we have this tendency to dilly dally or sugarcoat uh, when we are saying things, but when things are put on paper with black ink, they are harder hitting. Mm. 
and if you if you really have genuine feedback which is for improvement then it needs to be put on paper yep. Yep. so those would be let's say two things that i would i would recommend one continuous feedback two put it on paper mm, interesting you know i mean i uh, i had a case a long time ago where someone got really upset with some feedback i gave them and and they had kind of come to me to ask for feedback and then and it was a little bit strange so from that moment many years ago till today when people come to me and ask for feedback i think about i let them tell me their story whatever and then i and then i always say so you're coming to me for feedback you do you want my feedback so actually get acknowledgement from them that they want it yeah, yeah. And that basically also says, okay, you asked for it, here it is. Yeah. And if they say, no, I'm not looking for it, then even better. It makes my job a lot easier. So <laughs> what's uh, one resource that you'd recommend for our listeners that could benefit them? Practice. Uh, it's not easy and it doesn't come naturally either to take feedback or give feedback. It's something that we have to orient ourselves to. Uh, over a period of time, I have found my structure to getting feedback and sharing feedback. In a corporate environment, what potentially works is anchoring the feedback on the leadership value that the organization has. Right. It helps. Mm. Another simpler and more generic framework to do that could be things that you should start doing things that you should stop doing, things that you should continue doing, mm. a more generic way of laying down the feedback, and that also works. Right. That's great. Like having a framework. All right. Last question. What's your number one goal for the next 12 months? Continue to become a better human being, more healthy person, more happy person uh, is my continuing number one goal. Beautiful. Well, listeners, there you have it. Another story of loss to keep you winning. If you haven't yet taken the risk reduction assessment, I challenge you to go to myworstinvestmentever.com right now and start building wealth the easy way by reducing risk. Now, as we conclude, Amit, I want to thank you again for coming on and joining our mission. And on behalf of A. Stotts Academy, I hereby award you alumni status for turning your worst investment ever into your best teaching moment. Do you have any parting words for the audience? No, I think uh, it's, it's good to be here and uh, good to be sharing my story. I hope I can help some others. Beautiful. Well, you definitely help, and you're part of the mission now. And that's a wrap on another great story to help us create, grow, and protect our wealth. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, this podcast is about one guest, one story, one mission to help one million people reduce risk in their lives. Fellow risk takers, this is your worst podcast host, Andrew Stotts, saying, I'll see you on the upside.